everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm super excited to share with you all a haul of makeup and skincare products from Tokyo, Japan. So I recently went to Tokyo and I thought this would be a really great opportunity to try out some brands that I haven't had an opportunity to try before. Japan has all sorts of luxury makeup and skincare brands, so I picked up a lot of items. Normally I do these videos as a try on haul, but for today's video, I'm gonna just run through all the products, give you guys some swatches, and please let me know in the comments down below if there are particular products that you're really excited to see demoed. I will film with all of these products at some point, but it's probably gonna take me a while to film with all of these, so I would love to know which ones you are most interested in. Just to give you guys a preview, I primarily picked up items from three luxury makeup brands. So I got a bunch of products from Suku. This is a brand I've been wanting to try for the longest time, but in the US you can't really get a hold of them, so you usually have to buy from Selfridges. So I was really excited to go to an actual Suku store in Japan. I also picked up a bunch of products from Kogendo. This is a brand that you can buy on Beautylish, but I wasn't really sure how to navigate their shade range, so I was excited to actually get shade matched in store and pick up a bunch of their products. And then finally, we have Addiction. This is a Japanese brand I have not tried at all before and have not heard a lot about, but this is a pretty popular luxury makeup brand in Japan, so I was really excited to pick up a bunch of their products. And in addition to those three luxury makeup brands, I also picked up some products from the drugstore. So without further ado, let's go into this haul. So let's start out with the random products I picked up from the drugstore. So first off, I picked up two Japanese sunscreens. So I've heard really good things about both of these. This one is from Anessa. This is their ultimate beauty sunscreen. This is SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 plus. And this one is the Biore Watery Essence SPF 50 PA plus 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 plus. I've seen both of these products in a lot of best of sunscreen lists, and generally I've found that a lot of East Asian sunscreens are a little bit more lightweight on the face and last longer during the summertime, so I'm really excited to try out both of these products. Also from the drugstore, I picked up this Kiss Me mascara. This is actually a brown mascara, so it's the first time I've tried a mascara in a color other than black. And this is one of the most popular mascara brands in Japan. For me, I actually don't normally wear mascara because I find that it's really, really hard for mascara to do much with my super, super straight and fairly sparse lashes. But I figured since I was in East Asia where a lot of people have very similar lashes to me, it would be worth to try this out and see if this gives me some good volume. Finally, I picked up this cream blush from Can Make. This was in the shade 19, and to me this looks like a really beautiful everyday peachy terracotta. I picked this up because pretty much every list of best of Japanese makeup that I found included this cream blush on the list. Given how hyped cream blush has been lately and all the recent cream blush releases, I'm excited to compare this with the other products that I've picked up lately. Finally from the drugstore, I picked up this silicone mask, which you put over your sheet masks. And so this is basically supposed to keep the sheet mask on, help the product really absorb into your skin more. And this way you can kind of go about your day and you don't have to worry about the sheet mask sort of dripping <laughs> off your face. Finally, I picked up these daily sheet masks from a brand called Lulu Loon. I got their Balance sheet masks. These are actually meant for daily use, and so this comes with 32 sheet masks, and apparently this is one of the most popular sheet mask brands in Japan. Personally, I don't actually use sheet masks that often, but I was curious to try this out to see if it changes my skincare routine. So that's all in the drugstore category, so let's move along now to the luxury makeup. So first off, I wanted to talk about Suku since this is the brand I'm probably the most excited about. First off, just look at how sleek their packaging is. Isn't this so beautiful? And this brand is very popular in Japan as well. I actually had to wait in line and take a number in order to see their products. 
and actually originally I was going to buy a different one of their eyeshadow palettes but that one sold out right before I sat down to start going over the makeup I wanted to buy so someone just snatched up the last one right before me I'll put up a picture in case you guys are interested this is from their autumn winter launch and this eyeshadow palette was just so beautiful. I really loved the green matte. And also there was a shimmer shade that just had a really beautiful combination of green and purple and brown. So I really wanted to buy that palette, but unfortunately it sold out right before I bought it. That's okay though, I did pick up a different Autumn Winter 22 launch. So this is a limited edition eyeshadow palette. Isn't it beautiful? Here is a close-up of the palette. It's a really gorgeous, cool color story. And of the eyeshadow palettes they had, this one was probably the most unique and least neutral. The packaging of these Suku products is really beautiful and sleek. So it says Suku on the front, and on the side you have this really beautiful metallic detailing. Let me actually give you guys some swatches of these four shades. And for context, this one is called Yoyukari, and this is their signature color eyes number 11. So here we have the finger swatches, and now let's swatch these on my arm. So there's a glitter topper shade first that has a bit of purple reflectivity in it. Then you have this beautiful icy silvery periwinkle, and then this lovely violet fuchsia shade. And then finally, a creamy matte taupey gray. And here's a close-up of the four. So I've never tried Suku eyeshadows before, so I'm really excited to put this on the lids. I also picked up two blushes from Suku. So they have two different formulas, one that is a pure powder formula and one that is a cream powder hybrid. So first off, here is their Melting Powder Blush in shade four, Sumiro. This was a really beautiful, neutral, everyday shade. So you probably couldn't tell in camera, but this actually has a very beautiful, subtle sheen to it. And this is, I think, the most popular Suku blush formula. And wow, that, that swatched so smoothly. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I was very impressed with how smoothly that glided on. And I think this shade will be really beautiful on my skin tone for an everyday basis. Next, we have their Pure Color Blush, and this actually has slightly different packaging. It has a silver back instead of the black, and it has a button as well that you press to open. So here is the Pure Color Blush. This one is a powder formula, but it has a beautiful gradient to it, so that gives it a bit of interest. So now let me just swatch this in the center for you guys. This shade is a little bit pinkier than the previous one, but still pretty neutral as far as their blush shades went. I will say that after I bought this, I kind of regretted not getting one of the ones that had a more prominent gradient. So they have some that are pink on one side and yellow on the other side. And in terms of color story, I think this is more my jam, but those do look really beautiful in terms of that contrast between the pink and the yellow. But this one is still lovely, and I'm really excited to try this out. In particular, I'm curious how different the shades will look on one side versus the other. Actually, I'm curious if I just swatch this side. Okay, so that's almost more like a highlighter. Interesting. So I guess if you want something that is a little bit more of a shimmer blush, then you can sort of mix the two sides together. Otherwise, you can concentrate it a bit more on that side. This texture also is just super smooth and creamy on the skin. So I am really excited to try out all of these blushes. As you can see, none of these products are super, super glittery. Other than this glitter topper in the eyeshadow palette, everything has much more of a satin sheen to it. And for many people, I think that's the attraction of Suku. It's a really beautiful everyday formula that is flattering for a wide variety of ages. The last two Suku products I bought were these lip products. And so if you guys watch Alicia Archer, also known as Kinky Sweat, you know that she has been raving about these 
products from Suku for the longest time, so I was super excited to finally pick these up. So there are two separate formulas. One is more matte and the other is more satin. And you can actually maybe see that from the packaging. So yes, you can see that this actually has a matte finish, whereas this has more of a shiny satin finish. Starting with the matte one, this is their Comfort Lip Fluid Fog. I was in a neutral mood when I bought these products, so this is in the shade 8, Harutsumi. Oh, and the top also has a beautiful metal accent. Let me just give you guys a quick swatch of this. Ooh, it's very moussey and creamy, quite thick upon application. So I think this will go really well with these blushes. Again, a very beautiful, sort of neutral everyday color story we have going. This has a tiny hint of mauve to it, but overall is still in this sort of terracotta family. Next we have the Comfort Lip Fluid Glow. I have this in shade number four, which is Iro Gure. And let's swatch this as well. Ooh, so this one's a little bit more warm. It almost has a bit of a yellow ochre tone to it. I was really attracted to this because I wanted something that kind of reminded me of Fenty's Honey Waffles. I really loved that shade, but that formula just really did not work out for me. The scent was just too strong, but that shade almost was yellow in tone. And so hopefully this gives me a similar effect. As you can see, this definitely has a lot more glow in comparison to the previous formula. Both of these have a ton of pigmentation though. And here's a close up of the swatch. I think you can tell that these aren't going to be a really dry formula because they don't immediately set on the skin. My understanding of this matte one is that it's more of a moussey texture on the lips. So not necessarily transfer proof, but still gives you that kind of matte effect. Whereas you can see this is definitely very high shine. So here we have all the products I got at Suku and I am so excited to film a Suku video with all of these. Suku's been one of those brands that I've been really wanting to try for the longest time. I watched a lot of people's videos about Suku, but every time I went to the Selfridges website, I was like, I don't really know if I wanna pay for the shipping or sign up for their annual plan given that other than Suku, there aren't really other brands that I could only buy on that site. So I was really excited that this Japan trip gave me an opportunity to actually pick up some of their products in person. That said, one thing I will make note of that kind of surprised me is these products from Suku in Tokyo were actually a bit more pricey than the prices I saw online at Selfridges or other retailers. I didn't realize this until after I made my purchase. So, you know, price wise, it probably would have been advantageous actually for me to have just bought these online. I don't really mind because I'm still excited to have these, but I did just want to make note of that in case you're debating about buying them online. The prices online are actually pretty good at the retailer that you can access in the US and Europe. I don't know why it's cheaper there than in Japan. As we'll talk about shortly, in the case of Kogendo, the products I got there in Japan were way cheaper in Japan than they are in the US. So Suku is a little bit of an exception there. But before we move along, let me just also just share what else came with this Suku haul. So they gave me this envelope here which included their catalog in case you're interested in other Suku products. So really beautiful products all around. If I like what I've bought so far, I'll definitely be looking into these additional products as well. And then they also gave some skincare samples. So they gave one of their refining serum and then their hydrating lotion enriched concentrate, their replenishing fluid, Liquid foundation, ooh, that's exciting actually. Hmm, hopefully this shade works for me. This is shade 115, which just the sound of that sounds like it's gonna be pretty light, but I am excited about this because the Suku foundation is one I've been really wanting to try as well. So we'll have to demo this in the Suku video. Then we have a treatment serum primer and a cleansing oil. So in my dedicated video, I'm gonna have to use this primer and this foundation. Fingers crossed that works well. But I am excited to try out all of these products. I haven't really heard much about Suku skincare, so this is definitely going into my next travel bag. 
Okay, it's getting super hot in my room, so I put my hair up and put the blinds down a bit, so hence the lighting change. But I know I said this is not gonna be a try on haul, but personally, I really love spoilers. So I did take off my lip gloss. So I'm gonna go in with one of these products from Suku. Overall look today is kind of cool toned. So I'm gonna go in with the one that's a little bit more mauve -y. So this is the matte formulation. Ooh, look at that pigmentation. Very, very creamy on the lips. There we go. What do you guys think? This again is shade number eight. Normally I absolutely hate matte formulations, so it'll be really interesting for me to see how this wears over the day. At least upon initial application, it feels really nice, really lightweight. I basically don't really feel like there's anything on my lips unless I put my lips together, but the proof will be in the pudding. So I'll definitely update you guys at some point in terms of how this formulation wears. But moving right along, let's talk about Addiction. So again, this is a brand that I actually didn't really know much about before buying a bunch of their products on this trip. I think I heard maybe once or twice Michelle Wong mention this brand, but I saw them in a lot of department stores in Japan and they had some of the most beautiful looking counters especially if you're like me and you really like colorful, sparkly makeup. Addiction seemed like one of the best brands to go to for that kind of makeup in Japan. So first off, let me just explain how Addiction works. So basically they sell all of their products in these singles. And so you can buy them individually like this. And these are really beautiful acrylic packages or you can pop them out and put them into a case. So they sell these cases separately and you can just pop that open and then put each of the items in here. So the case is pretty simple and basic overall. It's basically just black with a little bit of sheen on the surface. And this container I picked up can fit either six eyeshadows or four eyeshadows plus a blush. So for me, I picked up a blush and then four eyeshadows. So I'm not gonna be able to hold all of them up for you, but kind of just to give you guys a sense of how this would look. Now they do offer to put this together for you in store, but I figured I'll do a specialized video dedicated to addiction so I can put this together with you guys, just so you can see the full process but I think these individual packages are actually quite nice as well. It's not like one of those really cheap acrylic packages. It has a nice snap enclosure. It's actually really quite beautiful. This blush in particular reminds me a lot of that Dior blush that constantly sells out, the one that's that really cool pink shade. I've had it in my Sephora wish list for the longest time, but hopefully this is a good substitution for that. So let me actually go ahead and just swatch the blush for you guys and then go through the four eyeshadows I picked up. So here is the blush. I picked this one because to me this was quite a unique shade. It's fairly cool toned and it's also a little bit more fuchsia and bubblegum than I have in my current collection. And so when I put this on my cheeks, it just kind of made me smile. It was one of those colors that was just really happy. So even though this is very different from the blushes I normally go with, I'm really excited to put this together in a look. Now the overall product that Addiction is most famous for is their eyeshadows, and this is what attracted me to their counter. So this was also my first experience putting together my own eyeshadow quad, which was quite fun. I did, however, sort of trust the sales associate mostly. I wanted to get shadows that would match sort of a Japanese makeup aesthetic, and so I didn't go as colorful and as sparkly as maybe I would if I was just DIYing this from scratch. I mostly went with whatever the sales associate said was the most popular. So hopefully this quad that I have is somewhat emblematic of what Japanese consumers enjoy. So first off, she picked this base shadow for me, which is a satin shimmer in a peachy nude shade. So on me, this honestly doesn't really look like a whole lot. It's a really gorgeous shade that kind of blends in with my skin tone. 
So at first I wasn't that keen on picking this up, but the sales associate said that this is basically one of their top sellers and the way Japanese women do their makeup is to first put kind of a base layer of a satin shimmer across the whole lid. And so having something that's quite similar to your natural skin tone is pretty good for that. But this is a really beautiful shade. There is a subtle gold shimmer to it. And this one is named Tiny Shell 022P. Next we have Shanghai Breakfast 019P. This is more of a purpley tone and I told her I liked purples so we kind of went that direction with the color story. But this is a little bit more of a muted purple. As you'll see overall this palette that I have is quite everyday friendly, is quite neutral. I'm really excited about this shade though. I think it's a way to kind of have something that's not brown but still is fairly neutral. So you can incorporate purple in an everyday look in a way that is quite natural. This is also a satin shade though it's slightly more matte in comparison to the previous shade. Next we have Gypsy Queen 020P and this is the deepening shade. So this one is also technically a satin shade but it kind of doubles as a matte. As you can see there's really not much shimmer to it. These two are basically in the same formulation so again they're kind of like the transition shade and the deepening shade but with just a slight bit of satin pearl in them. And finally we have the gorgeous show-stopping glitter topper. This is in Mary Age 004 SP. So this one I am really excited about. This basically gives me Pat McGrath Astral Solstice vibes. It's a really high shine formula that has a little bit of chunkiness to it. So this I think will go well on top of basically any shade. As you can see it's mostly kind of a white reflect and it doesn't really have any base pigment to it. The sales associate also said this is basically one of their top sellers. So I was pretty intrigued to try this even though it's not necessarily unique in my makeup collection. So to zoom you guys in, here is my palette from Addiction. So I will say this blush is a little bit more popping than the rest of this. So I don't know if I'll actually wear all of these shades together. But I was just really excited about this fun purpley shade. So I had to pick it up even though it didn't quite go with the rest of the look. In terms of the way the sales associate recommended putting these on, this is basically supposed to go all over the lid. This is supposed to go along the lash line to the crease. This is supposed to go along the lash line, kind of like a liner. And then this is supposed to go last just on the center of the lid and then a little bit on the lower lash line for some glitz. The final product I picked up from Addiction is this Skin Protector Color Control. This has SPF 40, PA++++, and this is in the shade Fresh Beige. This product is basically a super lightweight color corrector slash serum, foundation, skin tint type of product. So you can basically wear this on a no makeup makeup day just for a little bit of blurring on the skin. So I'm normally not a huge no makeup makeup kind of person so I wasn't actually originally going to pick this up but when I asked them what their most famous products were they said that for a while this was considered one of the number one cosmetics products in all of Japan and so I figured since I don't go to Japan that often, it would be fun to just pick this up and try it out. And I have used this once and it did look pretty good overall. I think if you're having a really nice skin day and you basically don't need any coverage, this can kind of act as a second sunscreen and provide a little bit of a blurring effect. I'll have to keep trying it out though before I give you guys my final verdict. Before we move on from addiction, let's go into what else I got in this bag from them. So similar to Suku, they gave some pamphlets with all of their products. So they do have all varieties of different kinds of makeup products. But as you can see, the eyeshadows are definitely some of the most popular products. This is really beautiful marketing material, by the way. 
Just look at all of these different eyeshadow shades you can pick from. Wow. Isn't that fun? Look at all of these. If I go to Japan again, I think it would be fun to create a palette that's more based on my own aesthetic rather than trying to get the quintessential Japanese aesthetic. I'm especially intrigued by some of these greenish shades. So I don't know, maybe I'll have to do that next time. They also have really nice makeup brushes as well. I didn't pick up any in this haul, but when the sales associate was putting products on my face, she was using their brushes and they were really soft and silky. Let's see what else is in here. So we have some samples. Interesting, I do not know what this is. Okay, so this is a sample from a brand called Facialist. It's their dual moist lotion, interesting. It says quasi drug on it, so I suppose it's supposed to have some medicinal effects. And then we have this, and I'm not really sure what this is. It feels like a napkin, so maybe this is a makeup remover wipe? Interesting, I'll have to try this out. Then we have the Addiction Oil Cleanser and another sample of their Skin Protector. This is the clear version, that's SPF 50. So that one's more like a sunscreen. And then they actually gave me this mini of their Skin Protector in the pink shade, and so that's more color correcting. So I guess effectively I have three shades of their Skin Protector. <laughs> At this point I have clear, beige, and pink. So it'll be interesting to try those out and see if there's much of a difference. But you can definitely see that they are pushing this Skin Protector product. All right, so that is all for addiction. And the last thing I'll just mention about addiction was I thought it was pretty nice, the customer service they had. So in addition to having them put all the products on my face using really nice, luxurious food aid brushes, it was also a white glove experience in terms of presenting to me my purchase. So the way it worked was after I decided on the products, the sales associate went to pick up some new ones and then she would sit there and actually for each of the boxes open them up for me while wearing white gloves and very carefully opening each box so then I could just see the products and verify that I had everything that I wanted. So I thought that was just kind of a nice touch. Everything in Japan customer service wise is just a little bit more refined than what I'm used to in the US but certainly Addiction pushed it up several notches and also they actually got someone to be a translator just to help me as well because the sales associate didn't actually speak English so there's a separate person there who worked for the department store who was just there to translate. So overall amazing customer service. I was there for like an hour <laughs> picking all this out, trying products on my face, and they were incredibly nice and incredibly helpful. So to round out this haul, let's go in with Kogendo. So I also picked up a bunch of products from Kogendo, but a bit more complexion oriented. So first off, I picked up three packages of their spa cleansing water wipes. And I have bought so many of these packets already. So they do sell these on Sephora, but they're extremely expensive. It's around $70 for three of these, which is a lot because each of these only has 10. So we're talking about roughly $2 per cleansing wipe. These were so much more affordable in Japan though. This was like $10 or less. And so I picked up three of these and I was super excited about that. If anything, I kind of regret not picking up more of their cleansing spa water. In case you're curious, their cleansing spa water is basically like a micellar water, but far more gentle than any micellar water I've ever tried. So for me, I wear a lot of eye makeup whenever I do makeup, and especially I do put products in my waterline. And I find with most makeup removers, pretty much every makeup remover actually other than this, it's quite irritating for me to remove the product on my waterline. But this is the one product where I can actually go in there and directly touch the product on my waterline and feel no irritation at all. 
and it's also just incredibly effective. I've tried a lot of makeup removers that aren't actually that effective at removing makeup, even though they're quite gentle. So for me, this has by far been the best combination of efficacy and also comfort and just being very gentle on the skin. So even though these are super expensive on Sephora, I always buy them. And so I was so excited to pick this up in person in Japan for a much discounted price. In addition, I finally picked up their Aqua Foundation, which is one of their hero products. This is a foundation I've heard so many rave reviews about. And this one is available on Beautylish, so if you guys are interested in this, you can buy it in the US. But I was super, super confused about their shade range, and so I got shade matched in store. The sales associate picked out one, two, three for me. So that is this over here. Let's actually take a quick peek just to see if this will be a good shade match for me. If you guys watched my Korean makeup haul, you know that even though I got shade matched in store in Seoul, those foundations were not remotely my skin tone. There's kind of a tendency in East Asia to prefer very brightening products that are much lighter than your skin tone. But let's see, hopefully this works for me. So let me just put one pump of this just so you guys can see it. And I will dedicate a video to this so we can actually really do a wear test and such. But let's see. Okay, I think that will work for me. It does look a little bit light. I could probably go one shade deeper, but I think this will work. And this is a really nice, creamy, hydrating feeling on the skin. Ooh. Very nice. So that's kind of the finish it leaves. Ooh, I am very excited about this. In case you guys aren't familiar with Kogendo, their founder was in the movie industry. I think she was an actress at one point. And so their products are supposed to look really, really nice in high definition on camera, but still be very gentle on the skin and look really nice in person. And at least based on this swatch, I am finding this very promising. I mean, now you, I don't think you can see it at all. It's kind of just blended into my skin. But if you see that slight dewiness, that's from the foundation. And it's definitely very blurred and perfected there. Ooh. Okay, so I'm, I'm super excited to try out this foundation. This is for many people a holy grail foundation. So can't wait to give this a test. And then the last product I picked up was this face powder from Kogendo. This has SPF 50 plus PA plus plus plus, and this is in the shade Soft Beige. So I actually didn't particularly want a powder that had SPF in it, but I was trying to find the powder that Michelle Wong always raves about, and this one looked the most similar to that because it does have a slight tint to it. They also had a powder that was completely translucent, but that looked quite different, and so I'm not really sure if this is the one that I thought it was, but in any case, this is the one that is the best selling in Japan, so I'm quite excited excited to try this out. It comes with this really beautiful, luxurious powder puff. So I'm excited for that because I feel like powder puffs are really in nowadays. So I'm not going to open this right now because I don't want to get powder everywhere. But this is also a product that I've heard is many people's holy grail powder, especially for dry skin. And so I'm super excited to try these two products out together and see how they work. So that's it in terms of my Tokyo makeup and skincare haul. I would love to hear in the comments down below if you guys have tried any of these brands or products. And also please let me know which products or brands you would be most interested in seeing in a video. I do plan to do a video on Suku, a video on Kogendo, and a video on Addiction. But since none of these are really new releases other than that one Suku eyeshadow palette, I probably won't prioritize these over other makeup content in the coming months. So definitely let me know if there's something you do want me to prioritize and I'll bump that up. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll catch you next time. Bye.